everyone. I've always liked the story out of um, 1 Samuel 24. It is the story of David on the run for his life with his mighty men um, from King Saul. And the story in, uh, in chapter 24 is that David and his men are hiding in a cave trying to get away from Saul and his armies who are trying to kill David. And in the process of that, Saul goes into the cave to relieve himself and all of David's men say, now is your chance. God has given you, given Saul into your hand, kill him. And David says, no, I can't do that. He's the Lord's anointed. And so what he does is he cuts off a corner of the king's cloak. And then when the king leaves the cave, he goes out and he, he bows down to the king and he says, King, I'm not sure why you're after me. I've, uh, I've, uh, consider you the king and I'm not going to do anything to, to do you, to kill you. If the Lord takes you, that's fine, but I'm not. And Saul was concerned that David was trying to run him off the throne because that's what God had said is David would become the king. And so um, Saul, when he sees that David could have killed him and chose not to, and that David was humbling himself before the king, Saul responds, he says, when David had finished speaking these words, Saul said, is this your voice, my son? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, you are far more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good where I have repaid you for evil. Today, you explained how you dealt well with me and did not kill me when the Lord put you into, my, into your hands. This idea of tears, I think, is an important thing I like out of this. You know, throughout Scripture, we see people crying. Crying has this, this, the idea of tears almost has a, it has a spiritual kind of perspective to it. Um, in lots of traditions, it's considered a gift, a gift of the spirit to have those tears. Those tears, um, Paul talks about crying for his churches in some of his letters. We know that Jesus wept over the tomb of Lazarus. And I think about my own life, and I think sometimes, you know, when I'm worshiping sometimes, when I'm singing, I will start crying. I can't tell you why I do that, but I do. And I think there is something about that. There is this idea, even within the ancient church, you might see it more in the Eastern church. There is this idea of um, tears are a, are a manifestation of some kind of a spiritual experience that they call... Um, the word compunction. Maybe you've heard that term probably in a Catholic church, I think is where I've probably heard it. But the idea of compunction basically means to puncture. And that there is something going on that is puncturing you. Uh, maybe you are shocked by your sin or by your human weakness. Um, it may be also a dissatisfaction with your sin or your longing for God. That's where this idea of tears is an important thing for us to take note of. It doesn't always mean that. Sometimes it's just out of pure grief. And I think that's also a part of it. Tears are seen to be maybe purifying in some ways. They are, maybe it's a mem memory of sin or it's a consideration of, of the goodness of God or a longing for heaven or maybe even out of a fear of ju judgment or damnation. And so our tears have value. Our tears are important for us. And so when you find yourself crying, I guess I would ask yourself, why? Why, do you, why are you crying? And I don't say that in terms of, you know, why are you crying? <laughs> but think of, into your own spirit, what is bringing about these tears? Is it the love of a lost one? Is it an understanding of the goodness of God and how great he has been? I think that's what's happening to me when I'm worshiping. I'm overwhelmed by his goodness, by his graciousness to me, a sinner. Maybe it's a, an understanding of, man, I really am a sinner. I really, have, I really have not made a lot of good decisions in my life. But in God and his graciousness, he has reached out to me. 
It in fact says in, in some places in the Old Testament that God actually catches the tears of the brokenhearted. And he saves them for us. So I invite you, as you think about tears, is, th is ask yourself, what is the origin of those tears? Because many times they have a spiritual connotation. And to ask yourself, how does that fit into your spiritual transformation that you're seeking to become more like Christ? I don't think it's a bad thing to cry. Our Lord cried. He wept over Jerusalem. He wept over the death of Lazarus. And I'm, I have no doubt on Easter morning there were a few tears of joy that were shed as well. Let me pray. God, thank you for the gift of tears. We don't always take the time to think about what they are and where they're coming from. But perhaps even in Lent, even if we are not crying, we can ask ourselves to become more aware of that gift that you give us. I ask that, Lord, this day in your name. Amen. Well, this afternoon we have our monthly community meal, and so I invite you to uh, come by for a hot meal pickup or uh, make sure that there are some people around you who could use a meal, know about it, and let them come as well. Also, we have uh, obviously worship on Sunday, and so I wanted to let you know about that. And uh, we'll have some, uh, some rows of chairs that are set up for folks to be able to kind of get in and out a little bit easier. So just some of the things that are going on as we're moving towards Holy Week. So God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye now, everybody.